For our next tutorial part, we're going to be creating this part right here. You can see all the features and dimensions right here, but we'll go through them as we, as we go. Skills we're going to work on, we're going to work on constraints, parallel constraints, perpendicular constraints, collinear, horizontal, and vertical constraints, as well as coincident restraints. We're going to work with dimensioning. So we're going to dimension, uh, you can use formula dimension, so using another dimension to drive other, to drive dimensions. We're going to dimension angles, and we're going to use what's called a driven dimension. And then to end it all off, we are going to learn the mirror command. Let's get started. Let's go to new. We're going to be in the metric, the standard millimeters. We're going to part. We're going to create that part. And let's start this up. Let's start a 2D sketch. We're going to go in the XY plane right here. We'll select that one. And let's create this shape. It looks like a bit of a U. Don't worry about giving everything perfectly dimensioned or straight. I'm going to start this first line. It's going to be perfectly straight. But I'm just going to kind of put these wherever they happen to lie. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use constraints to give me that perfect the shape that I'm looking for. Do make sure that this one clicks onto the end. Now let's let's use some constraints to straighten this out and get exactly what we need. So we've, constraints are up here. The main ones we're going to worry about are perpendicular and parallel for now. So let's start with parallel first. I want this line parallel to that line. Now I've got two straight lines. Automatically makes them work. I want this line parallel to that line. This line parallel to that line. I'm going to take this line, make it parallel to the bottom so it's flat. And same thing here. Oh, that one was already there, so don't worry about that. Okay, next thing I want to do is I want to make these corners to be 90 degrees. So let's go with this perpendicular constraint. Perpendicular, those two need to be perpendicular in right angles. Uh, these should already be 90. I'm going to make this one and this one perpendicular. Now we are, we have straight lines exactly where we need them. Yes, it's easier to do them right off the bat, but if you need to change something, you can easily with these constraints. Now we're going to do a couple of more constraints. I'm going to want this edge in line with that one, so we're going to use what's called a collinear constraint. So I'm going to click on that one and that one. Notice how now they're in line. We'll do a couple more constraints here as well. I find it often useful to take my drawings and center it across the X and Y axes. So I'm going to take a vertical constraint. I'm going to constrain this center point to here. Now if you watch, if I'm moving along here, you, there, that little dot that just showed up there, that's my center point. There. Now this line is centered left and right. I do a horizontal constraint. In fact, I'm going to take this, I'm just going to move it right up to there. Right on the x-axis. Perfect. Let's add some dimensions in to get this uh, the sizes we want. Take a dimension here. Let's take that bottom part down. I want a dimension of 100 millimeters. Type in 100. I'm going to have to zoom out so I can see everything. Perfect. I want this edge over here. Let's dimension that to be 45 millimeters. Let's just hold off on changing that one just yet. Because it was throwing things off, sometimes you got to change the order you do those dimensions. I'm going to take this piece and that right there. I'm going to dimension that to be 20 millimeters. So sometimes you got to change the order you do those dimensions. Now if I go back and change this to the 45 millimeters I was looking for, it looks right. Let's dimension this line up here. 
Now I got a couple of options. I can keep typing in 20 millimeters because this is gonna be 20 and then this piece over here is also going to be 20 millimeters. But what I can do over here is if I click on this 20 I typed in before, it's going to link those two dimensions. Bang. That's how it says FX20. That means it's been figured out using a formula. I'm going to do the same thing over here. We will link it to that one, dimension number two. There's a couple of advantages to, to this. If I'm not changing this, then it doesn't really save me any work. But if I'm trying to tweak a design, if I double click on this 20, if I change it to 25, it automatically updates those other two dimensions. So if you have a repeating feature that happens again and again and again, and if you need to change something, it is quicker and easier if you link those dimensions. Now actually, 20 is exactly what I wanted, so I'm gonna go back to 20. And bang, all three of those dimensions are right back to where they were. The next thing we're going to do is put a slot in here. Now, uh, once again, I'm going to just roughly put my numbers in. Now, this time I'm going to intentionally try and keep it parallel to the bottom so I don't have to add the constraint. But if you don't get it perfectly right, you can always add the constraint later. We can make it look like that. Now, we're going to put some dimensions in. Between here and here, we want to put a dimension of 10 millimeters. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in this vertical constraint between the center point of this line. If you notice, I'm sliding along until I get to that center point. At least it's kind of small to see, but it's there. I'm going to click on that middle point, and I'm going to center it with the middle of the drawing. There. Automatically centers it. Now, it still doesn't look right. These angles aren't exactly what I'm looking for. I don't quite have the right length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dimension. And let's dimension an angle. To dimension an angle, I'm going to click on this line. Now at first, it wants to start giving me a height. But then if I move on to connect to this one, it gives me the angle symbol. Now I can put in an angle. Now I want that angle to be 60 degrees. I want this angle over here to also be 60 degrees. So I'm still on the dimension command. Click on there, click on there, bring up my dimension. And since I always want these two to be the same, when I click on it, I'm going to click on this original 60. That's dimension number six. And now they're linked. So if I change one, it will change them both. And the last dimension I need on this part is I'm going to dimension the length of this line right here. That, let's bring it down here out of the way, is going to be 40 millimeters. Okay, we're going to do one more dimension here, but watch what happens. I'm in the dimension command. Watch what happens when I dimension this line right here. It pops up an error message here saying, adding this dimension will over constrain the sketch. Choose accept to create a driven dimension. So I hit accept. See those brackets around that 25? If I click on it, it won't let me change that 25. The reason is the height of this part has already been figured out as 45 millimeters. The height of this piece has already been constrained at 20 millimeters. What that means is if I, I can't change this without breaking all of the, ge of the geometry. This is fully constrained, and this driven dimension really is only useful for measuring something. I don't need to put it in because it's already been calculated based on these two dimensions right here. All right, let's uh, finish this off. Now, before I go to extrude this, I've actually got two areas. I've got this big area here, and then I've got an area in here. And it might get confused about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this line off. I'm going to go to trim. And it automatically figures out that I want to trim this piece off. Click on that. I am now ready to extrude this part. Finish sketch. 
Let's zoom out so we can see the whole thing. And let's extrude it. Click on that profile, let's figure it out. I want to extrude this out 75 millimeters. Hit enter. Okay. And you notice that once again, that sketch that I worked on disappears inside the extrusion. The program figures we're done working with that. Let's hide it out of the way. Hiding. It's still there, but it's just hiding. All right, the last piece that we're going to work on is I want to put a couple of countersunk holes in each side here. So I'm going to start by creating a sketch on this side. Click on that face. And I'm going to project this whole shape in. I can project individual edges, but I want to put the whole shape in. Because remember, that shape is not in my sketch right now. So I'm going to make a couple of points, and I'm going to put them roughly where I want them. You can see how that one wants to automatically put it in line. So that line is showing up. That will keep those points collinear there. All right, let's dimension those points. From the point to this outside edge, I want that to be 10 millimeters. From that point to the top, bring that out. Let's go with 10 millimeters again. I hit that so it can automatically change both at the same time. Let's check the dimensions of this dimension, or this point. Not 10. Let's pull that number right there. Let's just make sure that this height, oh, it is not, it did not keep the collinear dimension. E13. So now if I change one number here, all of those points are going to change. I'm going to change it back again because 10 is exactly where I wanted it. It's an easy way to link a bunch of dimensions in case you have to fiddle with things to get them right. Let's finish the sketch. Okay, let's create that, those holes in this side. I'm going to bring up the hole command. I want a counterboard hole. Notice I've already automatically found my two points. Let's put a couple dimensions in here. I want the hole diameter itself to be 8 millimeters. I want the counterboard diameter to be 12 millimeters. I want the counterboard to go in a depth of 5 millimeters. And instead of saying giving it a total depth of the cut, I want it to go all the way through to the next face. So I click on that, and I want it to go through to this face. Gives me the preview, things look right. Let's put it on the other side. We're in good shape. Hit OK. I've got my two holes here. Let's just have a, a quick look to make sure they showed up properly. Oh, yeah, that's all the way through. Now, I want those holes now on the other side, too. I have two ways to do that. I can either, I can just redo the entire sketch all over again, or we're going to use another tool, which is called Mirror. And what that allows us to do is take some features we created in one spot, and mirror it onto the other side, and possibly save ourselves some work. So let's bring up the mirror command. There's a couple of choices here. The first thing we need to do is what features do we want to mirror? I want to mirror those two holes, and it selected those for me. Then I want to pick my mirror plane. Now we can go over here to see what planes we're looking at, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here into the browser window. I'm going to click on the origin. And there's a bunch of tools here that are normally hidden. I want to find the mirror plane that goes in between here. And if you remember in the beginning, 
we set it up so that this part, the original first sketch was centered on the X, Y axis. And that was to make things like this mirror simpler. You don't always need to do it, but I usually do in case I'm going to be mirroring something because then I can use one of these as a simple mirror plane. Now that doesn't seem to look right. That's not right. But this, the YZ plane is centered on that part. That's going to be my mirror plane. Notice how those holes show up properly. I'm going to double check on the other side. Make sure the counterbore looks right. Yep, counterbore looks good. Click on OK. Have my parts mirrored onto the other side. There, my part.